Hello, my name is Chris Hammond. I'm the director of training here with .NET Nuke Corporation. In this video, I'm going to walk you through installing .NET Nuke 6 utilizing Windows 7 with IIS 7.5 and SQL Server 2008 for our database. So the process we're going to follow here is we're going to go through extracting .NET Nuke. Now, when you've downloaded .NET Nuke, it typically will come as a zip file. I'm going to show you the, the steps you need to utilize when you extract that, pro that zip file. We'll also then go through and configure those extracted files on our file system. We will then configure IIS, our web server. We'll create and configure the database within SQL Server, and then we'll go through the installation steps. Now I'll pause the recording as we go through some of these steps that take a little bit of time to occur. So the first thing we're gonna do is we need to find the installation files. Now I've previously downloaded a .NET Nuke 6 installation zip file. And when you download a zip file, you need to go ahead and right click on it before you do anything else and choose properties. You need to check to see if Windows is blocking certain properties of that zip file. So I want to go ahead and click on the unblock option, click on apply, and then click OK. Now after that, we can once again right click on the file and choose extract all. Now this will bring up a, a wizard that will allow us to extract the files. Now I'm just going to extract them into the local folder there where I have this .nuke 6 download. I'll pause the video during that extraction. Now once the files are extracted, you need to go ahead and navigate into the folder where they've been extracted to, and we're going to select all of those files. I'm going to press Control A and Control C on my keyboard. Now what we're going to do with those files is we're going to put them into a folder on our local computer. Now when I set up a website on my local computer, I put them into a C, the C drive, into a folder called Websites, and for this I'm going to create a folder called DNN6. So I've created the folder, renamed it, I'm going to navigate into that folder, and now paste the contents of that installation package, which I copied. So as that copies, it'll put those into the DNN6 folder, and we'll go ahead and switch over to our web server. So I'm running IIS 7.5, which is the default web server within Windows 7, also within Windows Server 2008 R2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to repurpose the default website. So I'm going to go over to the default website, click on it on the left, on the right side of the screen, I'm going to choose basic settings. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the physical path, the place on the file system where that website is pointing to. I'm going to point it to the website's DNN6 folder, which we extracted our .nuke files into. Now, the application pool that this website runs under is important. It's called default app pool. So we're going to need to remember that as we go through the process of configuring our file permissions. So we've now set up the website in IIS. We've also extracted the files on the file system, but we do need to go back to the file system and now configure the permissions on that DNN6 folder. So I've navigated back into the websites folder. I'm going to right click on the DNN6 folder and I'm going to choose properties. From there, I'm going to choose the security tab and then I'm going to click on the edit button. From here, I need to add a user into the properties or the permissions grid for the, fo the folder here. Now, when we add a user, we're going to check our location first. If your computer is on a domain, it's likely that it will search the domain first. So we want to click on locations, choose our local computer. And now I'm going to type in IIS space app pool backslash default app pool which was the name of the application pool there that we saw when we configured the properties on the website. If I go ahead and click on check names, it should find that app pool. It does with the underlying designation there. Go ahead and click OK. That will add it to the list. We're going to make sure we have that user selected. And then I'm going to give them modify control in the allow column. I'm going to go ahead and click on apply, I'll click on OK, and OK again. We've now configured the permissions on our file system. So the next step is we need to go into our database and actually create a .NET Nuke 6 database. So I'm already connected to my local SQL Server using SQL Server's Management Studio here. I'm going to go into the Databases node. I'm going to right click and choose New Database. And I'm simply going to give my database a name of DNN6. I could go through and configure some other options, but I don't need to. So I'm going to go ahead and just click OK. That will create the empty database within SQL Server. Now, for permissions, I'm going to go ahead and allow the default app pool, which is found already under my security and my logins option. I'm going to allow that account access to my DNN6 database. But let's assume that that account hasn't been already created under there. 
So I'm going to delete it first just so we can start that process over. So under the login section, I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose new login. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Windows authentication here. So I'm again going to type in IIS space app pool backslash default app pool. Now I'm not going to click on search at this point. I am going to over in the select page option on the left, choose the user mapping page. I'm going to check the DNN6 database and it, down below, once that's checked, I'm going to check DB owner. So we're essentially saying that this IIS app pool, default app pool account, is the owner of the DNN6 database. We're allowing it Windows authentication permissions to connect to the database. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. We've now configured our database. We've configured the user that's going to be able to connect to our database. So the next step in the process is to actually try to get .NET Nuke to install. So I'm going to switch over here to Internet Explorer. And you can see I had previously loaded localhost, my local IIS web server, in IE. And it was pointing to the default IIS 7 homepage. If I come in here again, though, and try to access the web page, I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift and refresh on the keyboard so that it will try to reconnect to that web server. What we should find now is it's actually going to go out and try to install .NET Nuke. And it'll take a moment as .NET Nuke fires up for the first time. Because it's an application in IIS, all of the DLLs and the code need to be loaded up into memory. And what we should see is the installation wizard will appear here in just a moment. Now I'll pause it as we wait for that screen to fully load. So here's the screen. We have three options, custom, typical, and auto. Auto is disabled because I'm not using SQL Server Express. I don't have that installed, so I can't actually connect to it. I'm going to go ahead and just step, step through the typical installation process here. Go ahead and click on Next. The first screen we get is the file permissions. It goes and checks to make sure that the permissions are acceptable. So I go ahead and click on Next again. That will then take us to a screen that will allow us to configure the database. So I need to go ahead and tell .NET Nuke I'm going to use SQL Server 2008. Now that option would be SQL Server 2005 slash 2008. We then need to provide the server name. Now because I'm using a local copy of SQL Server, I can simply put in a single period and that will access my local server. I could also type in my computer name or my local IP address. I need to type in the name of the database, which was DNN6. Because I'm using Windows Authentication, I'm going to leave the Integrated Security option checked. Had I created a SQL Server user rather than Windows Authentication, I would uncheck that and I would type in the user ID and the password for that account. So I'll go ahead and recheck it because we're using Windows Auth. And I'm not going to worry about the DB owner or the object qualifier settings, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Next. And .NET Nuke will go through the process of installing our database. And I'll pause while that occurs. So the installation there is complete. We'll go ahead and click on Next again. That will take us to the next step in the wizard. Here we have the information for our host account or the super user account that you first create within .NET Nuke. You need to go ahead and define the password. I've typed in a password here. You can also change the username, the first name, the last name, or the email address. Go ahead and click on Next. This host account, the super user account, is the account that allows you to control all portals within .NET Nuke. After that, we need to go through and configure the account for the first portal in our .NET Nuke website. That's typically the admin account. So I'm again going to type in the password. I can also change the, the information for the first admin account. I can also change the title of this website that's going to be created. There is one template available right now, the default website. I'm going to go ahead and click on Next, and .NET Nuke will complete that installation process. Now, once the installation process is complete, you will see the new .NET Nuke website here loaded on the screen. You can see I'm already logged in with that super user account information. Now, in a future video, we'll go into more details on what you can now do within .NET Nuke. In the meantime, I'd encourage you to check out our .NET Nuke training page found under the Resources tab on .NETNUKE.com. There you'll find information about our .NET Nuke training subscription, which gets you access to our live and our recorded webinars. Again, this is Chris Hammond with .NET Nuke Corporation. Thanks for watching the video.